The world's climate is changing and it is doing so at rates we cannot sustain for much longer. The evidence is there. 2010 tied with 2005 as the warmest year since historical records began. In September this year, the sea ice covering the Arctic Ocean reached its second lowest level in recorded history. The Arctic's oldest, thickest sea ice, much of which used to survive the year's warmest months, had all but disappeared by the end of the summer's near record-breaking meltdown. And although the world has recognised climate change as a major threat and has been searching for solutions for nearly two decades, greenhouse gas emissions have continued to increase during that period by an alarming 45%. Long-term global growth in CO2 emissions continue to be driven by power generation and road transport, both in developing and industrial countries. Right now, Durban in South Africa is a centre of attention for all those who care about the future of the planet. It is in Durban that governments, international organisations and civil society will gather together at the UN Climate Change Summit to decide on how to deal with the global challenge of climate change. IUCN will be at the negotiations, making sure that solutions offered by nature feature in the outcomes upon which governments agree. People are often unaware of how effective nature can be in tackling the adverse effects of climate change. The key challenge is to put the great potential of nature at the centre of the debate and to find the best way to make use of it. Improving the management of river systems, coral reefs, mangroves and forests can help people around the world adapt to the often devastating impacts of climate change. Healthy mangroves and wetlands not only store huge amounts of carbon, but they also protect us from extreme weather and help us regulate floods, often in a cost-effective way. Forests are another strong weapon in our fight against climate change, and IUCN is championing the REB Plus mechanism, through which we can conserve and restore forest resources and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But to be effective, we must make sure that nature's benefits are distributed in a fair way and that all those concerned, including women and indigenous peoples, can participate on equal terms. Oceans also need to be considered at the negotiations in Durban. Because of their ability to absorb large amounts of carbon dioxide, they are crucial in moderating the rate and severity of climate change. However, increased absorption of CO2 comes at a real cost as it dramatically alters the ocean's acidity and this in turn impacts many forms of marine life, including fisheries. This is a potential threat to global food security in the future. Delegates in Durban must realise that the time to act is now or it may be too late to reverse the current worrying trend. IUCN experts will be in Durban to promote nature-based solutions and to encourage their incorporation into national policies as an easily available, no regrets mechanism facilitating immediate action. We cannot let the impasse in climate change negotiations that we've seen in recent years go on. Let's come out of Durban with a sound political commitment that will bring about real action and real tangible change.